what's up guys welcome back to another episode of donation off road so today what we're going to be doing is a 50,000 mile slash two year ownership review of the dirt nation tacoma now um we've done one of these before for one year and it was before we launched our nation but the video did very well and people have asked for do a two year maybe a five year so we're going to continue doing these for you guys now if you watch a channel you know that this truck is no pavement princess the first thing people say to me when they watch a channel is that i beat the crap out of this truck every weekend and it's true so if you take anything away from this video let it be the fact that my truck is a perfect example of what happens when you daily drive slash weekend warrior a third gen tacoma so this truck is a 2017 toyota tacoma trd off-road 4x4 it's a double cab model with the short bed and i don't have any of the fancy tech like jbl sound or the sunroof or like rear parking sensors or the front like crash sensor i don't have any of that stuff uh, the truck has 50,000 miles on it and it's probably been on around 50 off-roading trips that's just a basic estimate um i'll probably know that because i have a special edit coming in for you guys so look forward to that but uh there's a lot of miles on the truck and i also daily drive the tacoma so it's not just a lot of highway miles it's a lot of trail miles it's a lot of street driving this truck's just driving i'm just driving all the time i i literally spend more time in this truck than i do in my own house and that's saying a lot so what we're gonna do is break down the review into five different parts so that we can get everything covered that's gonna be interior exterior daily driving off-road driving and then we'll bunch together uh upgrades maintenance and repairs and then we'll close it from there so let's get to it starting with the interior it's pretty clear that this is an off-road vehicle um you know there's just dirt everywhere and even when you clean it up there's just like in the cracks and in the carpet like there's just dirt that you have to sit there with the vacuum for hours to really get it out of there um the display and like the navigation display and the cluster all that stuff you know has its wear and tear and scratches a little bit more than what you'd expect from a two-year-old vehicle just because of all the off-roading the charging port like the auxiliary you know port i don't even use that unless i have somebody hooking up to auxiliary other than that i just use bluetooth uh because it doesn't charge it very fast the wireless charging works just fine i always use that you know i'll charge up like my uh, s10 right here or my iphone but when it comes to like the car charger i typically baby the car charger because it's become loose to where i feel like it could break or you know sometimes the charger will just slip out from all the all the off-roading so i typically try not to use it or i'll just use my uh my jackery portable power station and charge things like that everything else is held up pretty well you know nothing's broken doesn't look too bad unless you know if you clean it up it looks all right uh the radio bluetooth navigation system works just fine i use them all the time when it comes to space the vehicle can get crammed if you have more than you know three people in there um, especially with somebody big like me like when i'm by myself i'm just fine i have plenty of leg room plenty of space but once somebody's sitting behind me it does start to get a little bit crammed with all the people that we take out on the trail um, it would be more beneficial to have a full size but I bought a midsize, so it is what it is. All in all, the interior is pretty solid. It's nothing special or fancy, but it does the job, and it's probably one of the bigger negatives of the truck, but that's a trade-off of buying a midsize. Now, with exterior, I covered quite a bit in our recent trail damage update. Um, I'll link that video below so you guys can check it out, because it's going to cover everything to do with body damage, and including you know dents, dings, scratches, pinstripes, etc., all that stuff gets covered. What I'll add to that from an owner's perspective is that this truck still cleans up very well. Um, if I sit there and shine it, if I you know wax it, if I do like the paint scratch or the scratch removers, the truck still looks good at least from a distance, and it still shines pretty well. But you know it looks like an off-road vehicle. It has scratches everywhere. It is what it is. Also, when it comes to stock exterior parts, um, the bumpers are pretty bad, and that's just being honest. Uh, they're designed to fail. They're designed to break when they hit something. So it's pretty common to see like stock Tacomas with the the plastic caps on their rear bumpers rip off because they just rip off so easily so i would highly recommend that you get a different bumper uh the one i have pretty good bumper i'll go over it later i've talked about it a lot on this channel it's cheap it's a good bumper but um the front lip is the same thing i actually just broke mine again in ocotillo wells um it's just plastic clips and when it hits something and you hit it three or four times it ends up falling off the rest of the trim i haven't had too much of an issue you know the fender guards which are right here i rub up against those all the time i rub them against trees and rocks and you know all this other stuff uh they hold up pretty well they haven't fallen off uh there's one trim piece that did fall off after gold mountain when i uh, brushed up against a rock but that was just one clip i could put it back on i just haven't done it it's it's a lazy you know just a lazy thing with me now something to mention is the tailgate which mine did fall off in anza Brego a couple months ago you guys have seen it here on the channel um i've already you know i made a video on why that happened i was missing a plastic bushing and because i didn't have that bushing i feel like what happened was the tailgate shook itself loose 
and then f proceeded to fall off as I was hitting whoops. Um, there's a debate out there on whether or not I left the tailgate open and that happened because I have left it open in the past. You watch some of our Azusa videos, you could see that. Um, I feel like I did have it closed, but either way, the tailgate fell off. It's something to mention. Um, if you're missing that bushing or your tailgate has play or it's loose, make sure you're checking that out and getting it taken care of so you don't have the same issue. The bed looks as you'd expect from a plastic bed. Uh, there's a lot of scratches. There's a lot of like gashes from, you know, putting jacks and tools and equipment and cameras. And, you know, we're constantly loading this thing up every weekend and then we're dumping everything out of there. It looks as you'd expect it. But more important than that is there's no cracking and there's there's no warping of the plastic from all the like off-roading trips. It still looks pretty good, so I consider that an A+. And finally, the stock wheels, uh, they're nothing short of amazing in terms of durability. Um, every single one of these has been bashed on rocks and trees and, and just, you know, really been beat up. They all got scratches and dings all over the place, but I've never had to replace a wheel. I've never had to, you know, replace a tire or had a flat or you know, too much vibration or anything like that. Um, the, the stock wheels look pretty good. I'm actually considering buying another set as backup um, or possibly for winters in the future because I really am impressed with those wheels. All in all, the exterior is beat up, but that's expected for an off-road vehicle, but it doesn't look too bad, especially if you're gonna maintain it a little bit better than I have. All right, now let's get into daily driving. As a daily driver, the truck has its goods and its bads. It probably has more bads than goods, but let's discuss. Starting with the negatives, probably the worst thing about the Tacoma is the gearing slash transmission issues uh, the trucks are in, you know just geared incorrectly from factory you know unless you're like manual shifting or you're going 90 miles an hour or going downhill you almost never use six gear and that means worse gas mileage and it's even worse than that when you have bigger tires there's a couple ways to counter this uh, first being a transmission software update that you can get from the dealer um, if you go to them complain they might update it for you if you have a 2018 or newer you most likely already have the transmission update so don't even worry about it um, um, there's some other cheaper options such as like the pedal commander which i've reviewed mine before a uh, really good useful tool it controls throttle response so it'll give you more efficient power to your tires when you press the the gas but the best option to fix this issue is actually re-gear the truck uh, now stock gearing is 391 if you were to re-gear i'd consider going 488 or even if you have bigger tires, go to like something like a 529. It's not gonna affect daily driving too much. In fact, it might actually increase your gas mileage because you're actually using your six gear and it'll definitely increase your off-road performance because you're getting more power, more torque to your tires, especially at lower gearing. Gas mileage for my truck is in the range of 14 to 16 miles per gallon. And that's after all the upgrades. Uh, stock, I was getting 17 to 19, but after I put on the mud trains and I put on the sliders, the MPGs just dropped. Uh, people have asked me if the snorkel helps. Honestly, I can't really comment on that because I, I, I haven't noticed a difference, so it is what it is. Ride quality can also be a negative, um, and that's because of the mud terrains and because of my suspension. It can be very bumpy and noisy with the thunders. You know, it can get annoying for my passengers, but me, I've honestly gotten used to it, so it's not that big of a deal. As for the positives in daily driving, although the space can be tight for passengers, I fit in the front seat just fine. Seats are comfy, I have plenty of leg room, even though I'm tall. You know, the Tacoma is very comfortable. I could drive this truck all day, and not get tired and in most cases i actually do drive this truck all day on the trail daily driving so on and so forth they see in the heat they work just fine um, which you know they should it's been only been 50,000 miles the sound system isn't terrible although i don't have the jbl system it sounds good enough to me and the combination of bluetooth sirius xm uh, gives me all i need in terms of music i do pay for sirius xm but here's a pro tip if you're considering doing the same um, you're gonna get three free months on your tacoma when you first buy it after that they're gonna want 20 bucks a month for you to continue using it. Now, what I did was after my three months, I canceled it and I just waited. And eventually SiriusXM just started sending me offer after offer. And slowly those offers went cheaper and cheaper till it was around 499. And then I re, uh, reapplied for SiriusXM. So I do have it now, but I'm only paying five bucks a month. So if you're considering doing the same, do it exactly like I did. Play the system and you're going to get cheap Sirius XM. So overall, I consider the Tacoma a good, not great daily driver. Uh, when you start upgrading it, you're definitely going to, you know, mess with the daily driving capabilities of it. But, you know, same thing. That's a trade-off of a midsize. That's a trade-off of an off-road vehicle. And you definitely get some style points if you're driving around a built rig like this. Now we'll get into the Toyota Tacoma as an off-road vehicle. And by God, this is where she shines. Just check out this highlight film of what the Tacoma does every single weekend.
Now the TRD off-roads, they're equipped with electronic rear locker and a Toyota exclusive feature such as crawl control and MTS. Now MTS is multi-terrain select. I haven't gone into it too much, but what it does is it gives you like with the little dial, you select your terrain. So mud, sand, rock, whatever you're using, and it'll help you control wheel slip and brake pressure so that you're able to better have better control of the vehicle. So um, seems like a pretty cool feature. We'll definitely be trying it out here on the channel and we'll give you guys a review of that in the future as soon as I I just make the time to try it out. Now, crawl control on the other hand, I am very familiar with, and you guys have definitely seen it here on the channel. A uh, short explanation of crawl control is what it does, it'll send power to all four tires individually, uh, so there's no need to press the gas. It controls the throttle for you, and you can control the speed with the little dial. This more than makes up for the fact that the Tacoma doesn't have a front locker. Um, time and time again, this feature continues to blow my mind. The combination of like crawl control and the Thunderers on the Tacoma makes this truck unstoppable in most situations. Some out there will call this, you know, cheating or a gimmick or I've even, you know, people have joked around calling it noob mode. Whatever. It's a feature that shouldn't be ignored on the Tacoma. If you guys have a, off a TRD off-road, you should definitely be trying it out just so you can get to learn your vehicle. Um, because honestly, crawl control has helped me avoid damage on difficult trails more times than I can count. Currently, the truck can do most trails out there, but I would say with like a re-gear, better suspension, some 35s, and most importantly, some armor, this truck can do pretty much any trail that's out there, including the Rubicon, Calico, uh, the hard trails in Big Bear. We're gonna be hitting all that stuff once we get uh, some better stuff for the truck. If you have a stock TRD off-road, I would say you could probably do most of the trails that I've done. Only thing I would do is consider getting some rock sliders and some better tires, because the stock tires, they're more geared towards like street use. Um, they're not too good off-road and the lock of sliders is a big issue for the truck especially if you're gonna get anything with rocks sliders are definitely a must-have um, it's the first upgrade that I recommend to anybody regardless of what you drive get yourself some sliders protect your investment because when you bash yourself against a rock like I have you're gonna hate it. So the TRD off-road is a very capable vehicle and it can do a lot of trails right off the lot. Um, and even more than that, when you consider doing some key upgrades. Lastly, we'll go over repairs, maintenance, and upgrades. Uh, first off, with everything that I've done to this truck, it's still considered a budget build. Um, don't think for a second that this is like what you would see with a fully built Tacoma. If you wanna see that, you can go see like accounts like Pro Taco, Busta Beat George, uh, Max Powell, Valley Taco. Those guys all have very well built Tacomas. Me. I'm a budget build. Um, it's it's kind of crazy the amount of things that I can do, but it just proves the point that you can do some pretty gnarly trails with a light build. You just gotta go out there and have some fun. So let's go through the upgrades. Getting into it, I have a three inch Old Man Emu lift with two inch blocks in the rear and Dirt King upper control arms with the 1.25 wheel spacers to keep the stock wheels. Uh, since our trip to Baja, the suspension has been on its last legs. The upper and lower arms need to be rebuilt and I actually broke a shock in Baja. Didn't notice for two weeks. Don't ask me how. I did already have it replaced with like a cheap one from O'Reilly's. So I have four shocks on there. It's just two of them are different on the rear. But suspension is definitely gonna be the next major upgrade for the Tacoma once we figure out what brand we wanna go with. For tires, I have the Thunder Track Grip Mud Terrains. Now, I've re reviewed these before. Best mud terrains that you can get for the price. Uh, these are killer for off-road use. Mine are at about 50% right now, but my next set will definitely be Thunderers when that time comes. Other upgrades include the Air B Safari Snorkel, snorkel gang uh, rock sliders from relation race wheels fab Ford rear bumper rci skid plate and the pedal commander and that's pretty much it uh, pretty solid proof that you don't need a ton of upgrades to go out there and have fun on the trail as for maintenance and repairs i've kept it pretty consistent with oil changes every 5,000 miles for a filter and the oil same with the air filter i'll change it every 10,000 miles or whenever needed because it does get dirty sometimes as for maintenance and repairs i've kept it pretty consistent with oil changes every 5,000 miles i'll change the oil i'll change the filter and then it's the same with like the air filter. Um, I'll change it every 10,000 miles or whenever needed because it does get very dirty or muddy sometimes. The trans fluid will be changing for the first time tomorrow at 50,000 miles. So we'll be making a video on that so you guys will see it right here. And then in the future, we'll do the transfer case and the front and rear diffs. And we'll make video on those as well. Now for repairs. This is another area where the Tacoma has shined. Um, we've definitely had to make some repairs, but the list isn't too long. So let's go through it. The transmission has overheated a couple times. Uh, luckily, the truck has a feature where it'll turn itself off when it gets too hot to prevent any like permanent damage, but it has happened, so it's worth mentioning. I replaced the CV axle after the clip for the boot slipped off. Um, after replacing 
the CV axle, I realized I probably didn't have to replace the whole thing. I probably could have just taken it off, fixed the boot and put it back on there. Um, it is what it is. Now I have a spare for the Rubicon. So that's not the worst thing in the world. I replaced the dead battery a couple weeks ago. Uh, the tail light has been out for, I think about nine months now. Uh, fun fact, my tail light has been out since I wrapped the truck. So probably as long as anybody could remember, people tell me all the time, I've just been too lazy to fix it. I'll definitely fix it and I'll make a video on it so we can celebrate uh, my procrastination going away. Fun stuff. AC blower motor went out and I did have that replaced through the recall, so we're good to go there. I haven't had any issues with it since. And that's it. That's a small list of repairs. Um, that should be the major takeaway from this video. 50,000 miles of carnage, constant off-road abuse, constant daily driving. Um, when you consider the cycle of I, every Sunday, I beat the crap out of this truck and then I'm right back at work, six o'clock in the morning with that truck and then I drive it all week, and I haven't had any major issues, that's impressive. Suspension is definitely the worst of it and we're gonna get that taken care of and we'll keep abusing the taco after that. So that's pretty much wraps up our two year 50,000 mile review of the Dirt Nation Tacoma. In conclusion, I'll say that I believe the Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road 4x4 is one of the best mid-size trucks on the market. Uh, you're definitely gonna get some competition when it comes to the ZR2, which are great trucks. If you purchase one, you're definitely not gonna be displeased. There's a lot of great features, a lot of great things about the ZR2. Um, I'd still rather save my money and get a TRD off-road because it is significantly cheaper than the ZR2 because it doesn't even compete on the same level. The TRD Pro, which is more a trim level up from the TRD off-road, competes with the ZR2. So if you get a TRD off-road, you're still gonna get all those nice features of the TRD Pro, such as crawl control, MTS, lockers, everything like that. It's just a suspension piece that you gotta figure out, which, You'd much rather get your own suspension anyways because people always lift their trucks and get better tires or whatever. So get yourselves a TRD off-road and you're definitely gonna be happy with that purchase and that investment. So that's it for the video. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Um, if you know anybody that's in the market for one of these trucks, like a Toyota Tacoma or a mid-size, full-size, whatever, or they're barely getting into off-roading, consider sharing this video with them so they can get all the information they need to make the best investment. So other than that, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, as follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that good junk. We'll put all the links below. Um, you can also hit us up for shirts at Dernation Off-Road at gmail.com. But other than that, I wanna thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again next time.